my dear friends I hope that today um, would be a better day for you I hope that today will be a more hopeful a more promising day for you I hope that wherever you are and whatever you are doing that God may grant results and grant um, his blessings and grant whatever it is that you are expecting and I hope that every new day will bring you something to hope something to hold on to something that will inspire and encourage you today I'd like to reflect with you from the gospel reading and this this morning I don't know how many of you know that um, my my hospital ward is where we we take care of our COVID patients and so this morning at 6 30 we had a ceremony to bless our staff because we lost one of them and so um it was a very difficult experience to you don't want to lose your staff and so we lost one of them and that was very that was very hard to know that um this is real that people who care for us and care for our sick are always in danger too and so um, after we had blessed them and blessed their hands for healing that God may help them as they care for our patients we, we had time to talk with other staff and the one question I asked that got me thinking I asked some of them, what is it about your work right now that frustrates you more than anything else? What is it about what you do now as a medical staff, nurse, doctor, that frustrates you, that makes you really, really mad? I, I was waiting for a typical answer, maybe with your work schedule or the risks, maybe with whatever it is that causes them pain, you know, in the words or the constant the fear that they have to bring, they may bring this back to their families. That, that's not what I heard. What I heard was one thing, if there's one thing that frustrates me, and that's what I heard from them, is when I see people who are not taking this thing seriously and they make our work more difficult for us because the more of them that get sick, the more they put pressure on, on every already stretched workforce. And that is the worst thing that we want to see. People who don't wear their masks, people who don't keep safe distances, people who put themselves, intentionally put themselves at risk and then end up here and endanger every one of us. Says that is the one thing, if there's one thing that frustrates me, that's what frustrates me. I, I was very, I was very sad to hear that these doctors and nurses are not worried any day, any day about the patients that they care for and everything that they do. That was um, very instructive for me. I was rather surprised that they are concerned about how you and I behave out here and how our behavior here puts everyone at risk who is trying, doing their best every day risking every day to take care of us and so it is in the light of what happened this morning that i would like to reflect in this gospel the lord jesus is speaking about love he says whoever has whoever keeps my commandments or whoever loves me will keep my commandments whoever loves me will keep my commandments and whoever loves me Will be loved by my father and I too will love him or love her and will reveal myself to him whoever loves me will keep my commandments now I, I believe we take it for granted every one of us who is maybe baptized or who has some faith or who has had an experience of God in their lives believe that we love God and we love Jesus 
and maybe you're not Christian, you love God in your own way. We believe that. We take that for granted because we repeat it ourselves every day. Now, the fact that God loves us because I say that to you every day. Now, it is about 9, 16 a.m. Eastern. I want to say to you that you are still, at this time, the delight of God. That can be taken for granted because God loves you no matter what. But when someone loves you, they expect to be loved back. Love is not a one-way traffic. Love is something that we reciprocate. So if I love you, the way to sustain that love is that you love me back. That way you bring out more love from me. And then that way I bring out more love from you. So, so that's how love works. It doesn't work one way. Only God can love one way because he doesn't depend on you loving him. But he desires, he is happy to see that we love him back. Just like parents who love their children, in most cases, they don't care if their children love them back. They will keep loving them no matter what. But they will appreciate if you love them back. And so the Lord says, whoever loves me will keep my commandments. Now, love is a verb. And a verb is an action. It's something we do. It's not something we say. It's something we do. So just something we just um, speak out. Love is visible. It can be seen. It can be seen in how we treat the person with love. In how we take seriously the person we love. In how we protect the person we love. In how we do things for the person we love. So, so love is something that we can feel and see and touch and hear. It's something that all senses, all our senses, they can even smell it. All our senses can feel love, can see love, can know love. And so when the Lord says, if you love me, you will keep my words. You will keep my commandments. Now, uh, most of us, except maybe for those who lived in the era of Christ, no one really saw him physically to love. No one really met him to take care of him. And that's why the Lord said, if you love me, you will take care of my brother or my sister. So, so love for the Lord is visible for you and I in how we take care of those, his brothers and sisters. Of how we take care of each other, of how I take care of you, of how you take care of me, of how I treat you, of how you treat me, of how you protect me, of how I protect you. Of how I protect the world for you and for myself and for everyone else. That's how we demonstrate love. At a time like this where everyone is was so selfish, only self-caring about themselves. We as believers who have been touched by the love of God are called to a new evangelism. To a new evangelism. An evangelism that is, test, that is, that is witnessed by love. By how we treat and how we behave and how we protect others and so taking from what the Lord said here and what happened this morning with my staff I, I want to say this to every one of you who is listening part of loving Jesus says if you love me you will keep my commandments that means you will protect me you will do what is in my good what is in my advantage? What is, what is something that makes me safe, keeps me, keep me safe? So I, I want to say this to you, if you're listening to me. The one way you want to witness to the love that you have for Christ is that you do what is right, not just for you, not what is selfish, what is self for self, but you do what is right. At this time, you want to protect a fragile child who is Christ. A child who doesn't have the health that you have. Who was born with some medical condition. Who may be at risk if you don't protect them. That's a way to protect. That's a way to love Jesus right now. That means if you're going public, you want to you want to wear your mask. It's not for you. You're okay. But you wear it for me, for that child, and for everyone else. That's what, that's how, that's the best way to protect now, we're opening up a lot of places right now. 
And I'm sure this nurse that I spoke with and this other doctor that I spoke with this morning who told me the one thing that frustrates them is how you and I behave outside here. That means when you go out in public, whether no matter where that is, without a mask, you are giving the chance that someone might get sick because of you. And that someone will end up with them. And that's the one thing they hate the most because we seem not to care about them. We clap for them and yet we don't live as though we care about them. And that frustrates them. And I want to say this to you. I believe you in God's name. Because I know you are a good person. And I know you care about people. And I know you care about God. But if you do, take care of yourself. Protect yourself. But protect others more importantly. Because that is a way that you and I can demonstrate that we love God. And that we keep his word. That we care for him. That we will protect him no matter what. That's the one way to do it. Wear a mask. Keep safe distance. Wash your hands. Don't get infected. You might survive it. Someone else who was born with worse conditions than you may not. Might end up somewhere taking more resources from people that are already stretched. I beg you in God's name. Take care of the world that God is putting in your hands. Take care of others who may not be able to take care of them. That is the way that we can love Jesus and demonstrate that we love him and that we are witnesses to that love right now, right here in the world in very practical terms. Not just saying it, living it every day. So I encourage you, if that's a list, if that's the one thing, you can inconvenience yourself. I hear people tell me, it's uncomfortable. Wow. I'm sure if Jesus told you, if he called you and said, wear that for me, I'm sure you will wear it. He's telling you, wear it for me. And I hope you do. Keep safe distance for me. And I hope you do. Do whatever you need to do to stay safe and keep others safe. I hope you will do. And I believe you will. If Jesus sent you an email and told you that, he will do it. And he is saying that to you right now. Through those nurses and those doctors and all those who are right now in the hands of Jesus bringing healing to our sick. And I pray that God may bless you as we demonstrate this love for one another. And we demonstrate care and concern for one another. We lost our staff. I'm sure she may still be alive if someone had done something right. May that God may give um, protection to all those who work for health care. And that God may protect you. Now when all of this is over, you and I will still be here blessing and worshiping God together. As always, I like to end what I sh everything I do by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God, that God loves you, 